All right, Family Church, today we want to take a few minutes and talk to you about the topic of courage. Who out there today would consider themselves courageous? Who has courage? Do you? Do you consider yourself to have courage? Webster's Dictionary defines courage as the ability to do something that frightens you. The ability to do something that frightens you. Strength in the face of pain or adversity. One time, we were with a group of young adults, and we went to Action Park. I think it's called, um, what's it called now? Mountain Creek. And in order for us to start at the park and have a good time, I made everybody do the cliff diving, uh, cliff jumping. And this one individual went up to the cliff, looked down, saw how high it was, and kind of just froze. And for the next 20 minutes, they tried to convince themselves to jump off this cliff. And they jumped, went, went to jump forward and grabbed on the railing and is hanging there as everyone's gasping uh, because they couldn't force themselves to just jump off this cliff. And so eventually they did. And it took courage to jump off that cliff, to do something although it was scary, although you were afraid or you were scared of what you were doing. So I'm going to ask you again, do you have courage? Are you able to do things even though they scare you? Peter and John, they're these two disciples in the Bible. And there's a story that says that they had noticeable courage, that they were able to do things that scared them, that were in tough situations, that other people could notice their courage, and that that courage became contagious. In Acts chapter 4, Peter and John, they've been preaching the gospel in the streets. They've been doing miracles, and they heal this man who was lame. He could not walk. But this upset the religious leaders of the time. They were not happy that Peter and John were doing miracles in some other name other than what they were teaching and what they were preaching. And Peter and John were getting more followers and people were leaving what they were teaching. It caused this whole situation. And so they uh, arrest them and they bring them into question, Peter and John. And they, Peter and John begin to answer these questions. They begin to answer them with power and with faith and with confidence. And watch this, in Acts 4.13, the Bible says this, when the crowd, when the people saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. So here's some good news today. If you just read that with me, it doesn't matter what your schooling education is. It doesn't matter whether you've read the Bible one time or you've been reading the Bible for 25 years. You can have courage in Jesus Christ. Peter and John were fishermen. They, they were not scholars. They were not theologians. They had not gone to the same schooling that these religious leaders that were questioning them had gone to. Yet, they operated in a way that was appealing and it was attractive to people around them. Peter and John were what we would call blue-collar workers. But there was something that transformed these ordinary men into extraordinary men. Okay? I'm going to say it again. There was something that transformed these blue-collar, ordinary men into extraordinary men. And it's this line. These men had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. The result or, or the... the, the um, the byproduct of being with Jesus was that they had courage that was evident to others around them. Acts 4.14 goes on to say this, But since they could see the man who had been healed standing with them, so they healed this lame man, they could see this guy standing with them, there was nothing that they could say. They had done it. They had healed the guy. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together what are we going to do about these men, they asked. So I said, hey, can you guys step out the room? We need to talk about you. Yeah, what are we going to do with these guys? 
They healed this guy. They, they operated in, in a miracle and a gift that we don't have. What are we going to do? I'm going to tell you this. It's confusing to people to see trouble all around you, but it not affect you. It's confusing for people to see you courageous when they see everyone else shaking in fear. It's confusing to people to see you excelling when everyone else is spiraling out of control. What are we seeing happening today? We're seeing the same sort of thing. We're seeing chaos. We're seeing people spiral out of control. We're seeing uh, uncertainty. But I'm going to ask you, do you have courage? Are you courageous? The Bible goes on to say this. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign. And we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. So strange. Like, in my mind, wouldn't you ask them, hey, can I have that same anointing you have? You obviously can do something I cannot do. Can you teach me? But no. It was, well, we can't deny it, and we can't really stop you, but we're going to say, just get out of here. Like, Let's just pretend this didn't happen. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Just like right now, we've been quarantined, we've been shut in, we're stay at home, all these things. To stop the spread of a virus, the one thing that is happening right now is that there is an overwhelming spread of the gospel. Tyndale House uh, just said that their s- sales on Bibles have been up 60% since this pandemic has happened. 60% Bible sales up during this pandemic. The gospel is spreading. Do you have the courage to spread the gospel in uncertain times? They order these men to stop talking about Jesus. The scripture goes on to say this, but Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. This goes back because they had been with Jesus, right? We can't stop talking about what we saw Jesus do and what he anointed us to do and the things that we were empowered to do. We can't stop talking about it. And this is what I'm seeing happening today. We've stopped talking about the goodness of God and we're talking more about the problems that are around us. We're talking more about the situations. We're talking more about the fear. We're talking more about the confusion. We're talking more about the news and making sure that we repost the bad news. And we haven't spoken so much about the things that we've seen God do in our lives. Truth be told, they said, we cannot stop speaking about Jesus and what he's done for us and what we have experienced through him. And I want to tell you today, that's how the courage came. That's how their courage came. That's how they were able to do something, although they were afraid of being arrested. They were concerned about the beating. It was there. It was there. But they had seen Jesus operate. They had seen Jesus at work. By spending time with Jesus and experiencing his presence, courage came. At the beginning of the year, we launched a new initiative, uh, a word, a phrase in the Latin called Coram Deo. And this means before the eyes of God or in the presence of God. And right now is a great time to remember that we are living our lives Coram Deo. We are living our lives before the eyes of God and in the presence of God. What a time to embrace the presence of God. What a time to continue to move the gospel of Jesus Christ forward. Now, I knew it might look different. 
It, it, it's not that we're doing it on a stage in, in a crowd of a thousand people, but we can do it one message at a time, one text message, one phone call at a time. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's moving forward in spite of your fear. Listen to that. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's moving forward. It's doing the thing that you're supposed to do even though you're scared doing it. I want to give you a few scriptures today to inspire you, to shake up your spirit man a little bit, to inspire you to be passionate about the things of God right now in this moment. John 14, 27 says this, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. When we have a promise from God like that, it can build courage. He's telling us, don't be afraid. I've got you. I've got you. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, my, is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 56, 3 and 4. For I, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God, I trust and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Joshua 1, 9. I have commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. The Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Even if you ain't going anywhere and you're staying at home. Right? The Lord, your God, is with you. That gives you courage. It gives you courage to do something that you wouldn't have done all by yourself. You ever felt that peer pressure to do the thing that you wouldn't have done normally if you're just by yourself, but because you're with a bunch of friends, you've now got this courage to do it? That's what God is saying to us today. I am with you always. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Psalm 112 and 6. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure they will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. Here's the big idea today. Don't be shaken by the troubles around you. Don't be shaken. Have the courage. Take courage, the scripture says. Take it. It's yours. That's your part to play. Courage is available You've got to take it. Keep moving forward towards God, even though there's things in your life that may scare you, even in uncertain times. Courage doesn't mean it doesn't scare you. It means that you've chosen to trust God, even though you're scared doing it. Whatever the situation is, all right? Um, when you as a Christian, as a child of God, take courage, that courage becomes contagious to others. In Acts 4, it says that the people saw the courage of Peter and John, right? They saw the courage, and then they saw that they were unschooled men. Later on in the passage, towards the end, it says that 
their number increased, believers, people who put their trust in Jesus, increased to 5,000 that day because the courage was contagious. Courage is contagious. You remember the story of a young shepherd boy named David? David was anointed to be king. He went to the battlefield to deliver lunch to his brothers. And as he's delivering this lunch, he hears this Philistine warrior named Goliath, this giant, mocking the Israelite army. David was but a teenage boy, and he hears this and he says, who is this guy that defies the armies of God? Let me just ask you a question. Do you believe that David was courageous? Comment right now. Do you believe that David was courageous? And you're probably commenting, yes, David was courageous. I don't think David was courageous. Because courage is doing something that scares you. David wasn't scared. David wasn't scared. David didn't need courage because David had practice. David was brave. Bravery is doing something that scares other people. David walks up, he says, I'll fight this guy. King Saul says, no, we can't fight him. His brothers say, David, no, you can't do this. Everybody else was afraid, but David wasn't. David said, wait, 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 listen. He's but a man. When a bear came into my pasture to take one of my sheep, I killed it with my bare hands. When a lion came in, I killed it with a slingshot. I can take this guy. See, it didn't take courage for David to fight Goliath because he had practice in private. It's what you practice in private that you get celebrated for in public. David says, I'll take this guy out. He stands up there. Everybody else was afraid. So now, when this whole thing goes down, David kills Goliath, cuts his head off. That was bravery. It's like, it's brave for a person to go work on a skyscraper to someone who's afraid of heights. That person's brave because they can do something that I'm afraid to do. Courage is, I'm going to do something that frightens me. David didn't need that. So I, I'm just talking to so, so Pastor Mike, what do we want to be? Do we want to be practiced or do we want to be courageous? We want to be both. We want to be both. I'm just pointing out that sometimes we confuse these terms. We confuse these things and say that, well, I want to be like David. Well, if you want to be like David, you need to practice. You need to put some practice. You need to put some time in. I'm just pointing out on the flip side that we don't always have to be like David. We don't always have to be like David. We can, there can be things in our lives and, and around us that scare us. But can I still do what God called me to do in spite of that fear or that scared or, or that emotion being there? Today, we need a dose of courage and bravery. We need to be moved by the things of God not moved by the things that scare us. We need to be moved by what the Word of God says, what those scriptures say to us. That needs to be speaking louder in our ears and louder in our hearts and louder in our spirit than what we're hearing around us. I pray today that you are strengthened by what you hear. I pray today that you are encouraged for those who have been growing weary in well-doing. Know that you have a church behind you that's praying for you, that's believing in you, that's supporting you in your walk with the Lord. I pray for those who have been touched this week uh, uh, tragically by circumstances or, or got bad reports from the doctors. We're, we lift you up today. We support you in prayer that you can be courageous, you can be brave, you can be anointed by God. We want to pray with you today. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we thank you that your word will never return to you void. It's never a voided check. It's a cash check. 
It's a done deal. It will perform. It will do everything you set it forth to do. So Lord, we believe your word. We take you at your word. And we believe that these things are ours, that we can be strong, that we can be courageous. We believe that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you will be with us always, even to the very end. Lord, I thank you for those today who have never put their trust in Jesus, that today would be that day of salvation, that they heard something today that just triggered a change in their heart. They say, today, I believe. If you're watching live today and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we want to give you that opportunity right now. And you do that by praying a simple prayer. And it goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. If you prayed that prayer for the first time today, would you type Jesus in all capital letters in any one of the chat rooms that you're in? Just type Jesus and we will direct message you or we follow up with you to get you started in your first week with your walk with the Lord and what that would look like. We thank you for tuning in today. We love you. We can't wait to see what God is doing in you and through you in this season. God bless.